Good morning, everybody. I'm a little dragging this morning. I had a hard time getting up and getting out of here to uh, to pray this morning. I'm out here at my church with 101 different things running through my mind. I feel like I want to talk. <laughs> I guess talk to anybody at this point. Um, but not sure what particular I want to talk about. It's like my spirit is heavy. Not heavy in a bad way, but heavy in a good way. And I'm just trying to diagnose, excuse me. It's early in the morning and I haven't had my coffee yet. And um, just kind of figure things out. I guess is the best way to put it for right now. Let me talk about this. This is probably one of the heaviest things that's on my mind right now. I don't know if, I'm pretty sure, and it's not, I don't know. I'm pretty sure many of y'all have been in um, positions where you feel like you're called to something, uh, to lead something. Uh, that can have a significant significant impact not only on you but on many people's lives um but this thing that you're called to can impact a community at large um for me i do believe and have always sensed that i'm a natural born leader there are some who can be groomed to lead and then there are some who are just naturally gifted. It's a natural ability. It just it just comes with ease, I guess, for them. And I think I am the latter. Um, and I don't say that arrogantly. I, I just think it comes with easiness for me, basically because I love to serve people. I love to make people better i love to challenge people um not challenge them in a sense to make their life difficult even though oftentimes it does but challenge them in a sense to improve their quality of life to improve their personality to improve whatever it is that they're doing that is just rooted in me um and that's what true leaders do true leaders who are natural born leaders they look at circumstances where people think there's no hope there's nothing they see nothing but problems and true leaders see nah I, I see potential <laughs> I see an opportunity here and they jump at it from whatever angle that needs to be work to make something that seems that won't work to work and it always one of the main capital or resources that um as a part of that is dealing with people. So I get pleasure, <laughs> a great deal of pleasure out of making people around me better. Even if I never get the credit for it, even if I never am recognized for my part of my role, that's that's not where I get the pleasure from, is being acknowledged. Ooh, Deidre did, it. no. I get the pleasure of seeing people grow around me and knowing I had a hand in that. With that being said, God recently shocked me because he's called me to something that's, I know I'm capable of doing, but I feel it's far greater to me. I can look around me, particularly those who are in my inner circle and says, why not that person? I, I, I know that person is good at doing that. Why me? Um, I'm used to following somebody in, in that arena, not leading it. But I'm going to quote something that I've often hear several people say in the church. And I get it, but never probably grasped the full significance or meaning of it until now. And that God doesn't call the ones that are qualified. 
he qualified those who are unqualified, those who may don't see themselves fit for something or who others don't see is a good fit for something. And that's what I'm feeling right now. God has called me to something that I know I'm capable of doing, but I don't feel that I'm the most qualified person to do it. There are certain aspects that is required in the way I see, in the way I've seen that God is showing me that it needs to be done that is natural for me. It is natural for me to um, pull people together that are not accustomed to working together and say, hey, look, this needs to be done. Come on, let's do it. Let's do it. And motivating people to excel at a level and even to work with people that they won't typically work with. That's natural for me. But primarily in a corporate setting, that's natural for me. Um... And I'm feeling tested right now. I really am. I, I am a type of person I always want to do whatever the Lord puts in my spirit to do. I always want to say whatever the Lord tells me to say. Being obedient is very important to me. And that I have to greatly credit to my parents. And even my grandmother. Um... Those individuals, my, my mother was very firm. Um, I mean, extremely firm when we when she was raising us up until about our teenage years. And then she became more lax, maybe because she was just tired by that time. I don't know. But um, my mom, oh, my goodness, she raised me with an iron fist. And my dad... He uh, he was firm, but because uh, my parents divorced when I was young and my mother had the primary responsibility of rearing us. And so I bounced back and forth a lot between my parents' household. And I didn't spend as much time coming up with my father, especially because he was in the military. But... Um, but I had a great deal of respect for my father. So when my father said something, I just did. And that's the way I came up um, and compared to my siblings. Um, when my parents spoke, I did. <laughs> I didn't question. I just did. Um, I didn't become rebellious until in my early 20s. You know, and that's when I would kind of not want to do what they ask me to do or be confrontational about things that they ask me to do. <clears throat> My grandmother, who was a quiet woman in nature, she didn't say a lot, but when she did spoke, <laughs> she got my attention, you know? So, um, so I'm the same way. So I was wired that way. So I'm the same way in my interaction with, my heavenly father, when he puts something in my spirit, I naturally want to be obedient to that. Um, but I'm struggling with this one. Because I know that I know in my spirit there are individuals I see as more qualified to do this. Um, I'm not fearing. There's very little that intimidates me. Um, I don't know. I don't know, guys. I got a lot running in my head. I just know I want to be pleasing to the Father. We all should be want to be pleasing to the Father. Um, I don't want to drag this out. I try to use these times to encourage you guys and uh, speak from the Bible from a scriptural standpoint but uh, at the same time I like being transparent and um, right now I'm just questioning a lot of things within myself I'm, maybe I'm questioning it more so because I don't want to disappoint the father 
We all should never want to disappoint God in the way we live our lives. Um, and then sometimes when God calls us to something, we don't see ourselves doing exactly that. We might see ourselves participating in some way and maybe following others, but we just don't see ourselves doing exactly that. But I get it. I get it why God is calling me to what he's calling me to this morning that's going to become more of a routine thing on a regular basis that's going to involve me connecting a lot of people from different backgrounds in this community and surrounding community. I, I get it. But there's a level of anxiety that comes with it because this is much bigger than me. It really is. And I know it's preparing me for what God is calling Felicia and myself to as far as the ministry that we're called to that's going to be in a different area than where we're currently living. Um, and I know it's prep also in this. And it goes back to what I said to Felicia yesterday. How can... I, and I was speaking about myself, expect to have success in building what God is calling me to build or calling us to build because I was talking to her. If I'm not willing to help somebody else build what God is calling them to build and then be successful at it, I see this as a test. Am I willing to help build something for someone else that I'm not going to really gain anything from? I mean, I gain experience and that kind of stuff, but um, it's not mine is what I'm trying to say. It's not something God is giving me that I have ownership on of. It's something someone else owns and I'm just helping them to build it um, to a beyond what their imagination is. I can see God's plan clearly more than ever before. But there's a level of fear that comes with it and not fear because I fear man, not fear because I fear failing because I personally believe just from my experience in the corporate world, uh, the best experience you can gain is failure. You fail at something, then you're like, oh, okay, I shouldn't have done this and this and that. And you grow from that. And you ever you are able to build better um, moving forward in the future. But I, my fear is more so is not living up to God's standard. Disappointing him. Not following through with his instructions. Getting myself, my flesh in the way. Allowing the... How can I properly say this without being disrespectful? Not allowing those who are going to, who are going to be confrontational and try to impede what God is trying to do, especially through you, um, to be a discouragement or a hindrance of what I know God is showing me. You know, and, and the list can grow tremendously in a negative way. And that's what I'm battling with this morning I know I'm going to do what God tells me to do sometimes I might be slow in doing it but I will do it but I'm having an internal warfare right now and the warfare is am I the right person can I really do this the way God wants it to be done. And more importantly, in doing it in the way God wants it to be done, can I be balanced enough where I don't allow what I'm helping to build for someone else hinder from me to continue to build what God has called me to build for my ministry? Because I, I, I can't forsake what God has called me to do here for the sake of building something else, God is also helping me to be asking me to be an aid to. 
<sighs> so that's one of the things that's in my spirit heavily. And right now I don't have my team with me this morning that I can lay my burdens on. I could have brought it up in this morning's corporate prayer, but um, I got up late this morning. Like I said, I was dragging. And so um, when we had our morning corporate prayer, which is also an opportunity for us to talk about things that's heavy in our spirit, my mind wasn't on those things at the moment. Um, I didn't start really thinking about that until when I was on my way to my church here in the parking lot. But let me say this, and I'm going to close out with this because I am dragging this out. One thing I know about God, when he is about to do something that's going to blow your mind and it's about to explode, all he needs is one. One favorite person who's willing. Oh, there's a deer. One favorite person who's willing to stand in the gap to pray. Just one. Just one. And all he needs that one person to do is to remain faithful to what he has called you to do. Even if. Where is he going? Even if you're the only one to be faithful for months. He just needs you to show up. If it if it's mean conducting a Bible study and you're the only one that's showing up for that Bible study. I've heard someone said, yeah, we try to start a Bible study, but no one's showing up. Or, were you not showing up yourself? Study with God. Study with the angels. You know? So I don't have a problem being that one. I've never have been. That's never been an issue with me. I will be this one even if a whole year no one else shows up but me. That doesn't bother me. Because I know I have an army of angels. I know God and Jesus Christ is always with me if no one else supports me. What God is calling me to do. I'm, I don't, that's not my concern. I don't think that would be the case. But I'm just, just saying. And that's what all of us have to be mindful of. When God calling you to something. Don't be concerned about who's backing you. And et cetera. Just do it. Even if you're that one. That one faithful servant. Because that's all God needs. Is one. Be that one. So this morning, I'm that one, even though I know that already there are other people that is, have agreed to um, be a support in what God is calling me to do. So let me get up here and get moving. And do what God is calling me to do this morning. Guys, pray for me. Pray for our communities. Pray for our church. Because we need just one. In every area that God is calling his service to be. To stand up in the gap. And be committed. When you know you are called to a church or to do a thing you invest it when you give God your yes you invest it and no matter what goes on no matter how hard it get those who are called and invested will stay through thick and thin and that's something consistent about myself I will stay through thick and thin as long as, long as I know that God has called me to something when God is done, I'm done. But when God is not done with something, I'm there for the long haul, no matter what. I've always been like that. Yeah. 
All right, I'm feeling a little better. <laughs> this helped a little bit. Love you guys as always. I hope my, me rambling um, was beneficial to you guys, but I need to get up out of here and start praying. All right, peace. Stay in God's will and continue to be blessed.